all um, you can turn on your closed captioning on your um, just little thing below some captions. Some people are still joining. So I'm just going to um, basically start talking. We are talking about Deb Dana's Anchored. And um, even if you haven't had a chance to read through the first three chapters, that's what we're going to try to get um, I feel like there is a lot because I want to do a lot of some of those experiential um, things that she was talking about. If you were listening to the audiobook or if you were just reading it, I think it'll be, you know, a lot different when we actually go through it, especially going through it as a group. Um, I am sorry, I'm still admitting people. I think what I'd like to start with is I'm going to just make sure I'm on the chat Let's just check in with ourselves. Even if you haven't read the book, I want you to just um, kind of maybe even close your eyes or just tune into yourself. Assess how you're feeling in your body. Is there tightness anywhere? Is there like a lot of energy? Is there, um, you know, feelings of like stuck um, or heaviness? Um, what emotion comes to mind? You can put it in the chat if you're feeling like um, excited or uh, anxious, or maybe there's other stuff going on and you feel kind of just like overwhelmed and confused, but you're here. Um, you can put in the chat what you're feeling, a buzz of anxiety. Yeah. And I think with this nervous system stuff, it can be overwhelming to think of all of the terms, the ventral, the dorsal, sympathetic, and, you know, especially trying to, um, name them when you're in a state and not know what they are. So even if you just describe like a buzz of energy and tightness in my chest, even that is a step of awareness of like something's going on with my body. And what we want to see with the um, that vagus nerve, our, you know, body sensations are actually determining what's going on with our nervous system, what state we're in, which is determining how we're even like perceiving the world, how we're, it's coloring our thoughts and our feelings and our actions. Like we could misperceive something because we're in a different state, right? So curious and eager, my head feels full and heavy today, mixed with some excitement and anxiety, um, mild anxiety from something that's happening this AM. My heart is beating a little faster than normal excitement in my stomach. Yeah. So good noticing all of that. Um, I think we'll get better as our um, process goes on about identifying like ventral, dorsal, but just out of curiosity, how many of you feel like pretty comfortable with those terms? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's like so many terms and you could use ventral for like safety or calm or parasympathetic you hear in there. Um, and then how many just like, are there people that just don't really feel like they know what any of that is at all. And it's overwhelming. If you feel like that, just be super patient with yourself and you don't have to be perfect at identifying everything in order to um, have this work for you. Um, okay, so what I'd like to do together, there are so many different ways of calming the nervous system through breathing. But what I was thinking of today, you might have seen this activity before, is just taking an object. I just have like this fun crystal someone gave me. Um, and you can pass it from side. So I want you to just um, spend a few moments noticing the sensation of the object in your hand letting it cross over to the side and then coming across and we're activating both sides of the brain. We're um, giving our brain another task to focus on and some awareness and direction. Oh, mute other people. Yes, please everyone mute who's not muted. Thank you. Yeah, and someone was saying, oh yeah, sweet Deb, noticing a distraction from a friend's distress and feeling like I need to help them. That's creating urgency in me. Right. Like a lot of times these emotions that we have, they're really well-meaning and, you know, we <laughs> like, oh, I do feel this. Um, and we're not trying to avoid our feelings, but we want to just notice if we're getting stuck in some of these survival states, how we can anchor back into the safe state, how we can bring a little bit more of that back in so that we get back into our, um, you know, most enlightened, connected, responsive 
using our prefrontal cortex kind of state, the connected state. Okay, so how's that going for people? Um, you can put the object down or you can keep doing it if you want, but just check back in with your body. Just notice there's a little shift. Each time we'll do a little exercise like this to start because if your nervous system is a little more regulated going into a workshop or going into any place where you're learning, that's, you're going to, you know, be open to learning more. You're, you're, um, again, you're, you're kind of focusing more, you're getting into that nervous system state. So yeah. Did anyone, uh, notice a difference with that? And that wasn't one that was talked about in the book, but you know, there's just a lot of different little, um, quick little hacks. So find some that you're, you, you like, and just have a big, um, toolbox of them if you like. Okay, feeling a bit more focused now. Yeah, me too, a little calmer for me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I've made some slides and just to kind of highlight some of the main things, um, we'll go through that, open it up for some questions and then just do so, as much experiential stuff as we can. So I feel like that's where it gets really fun. But just so that we are all, you know, kind of on the same, page as far as some of this terminology and, and what we're doing and the important parts. Let's go to this. There's just a few slides here. Um, so if you had the audio book, you might not have seen the picture of the vagus nerve. It's actually a bundle of nerves and you can see there's a right side and a left side. And um, you can see where it innervates down into the chest, where you have your lungs and your heart and down into the organs where you have your digestive system and all the other organs and your adrenals and um, all the way down into basically your, your pelvis. Um, so 80% is afferent. So that means 80% going from the body to the brain. And this controls what state we're in. So remember how I said our perceptions are tainted depending on what state we're in. 80% of you know the information that our brain is getting as far as how we should control our nervous system is actually coming from our body. So it's just important to realize like our body does hold a lot of information, not necessarily about what is truly going on in the external world, but how we're interpreting it and, and what survival states we're going into. Oh, I just love this. I just tried to like make this cute little picture and um, the, autonomic hierarchy, this is an important point because these blocks build on one another. And so it's like impossible to go directly from dorsal up to ventral, but we'll start with dorsal basics. Um, it's a shutdown. It's a, it's like the freezer fawn. You might hear it called other things like collapse. And I'm not going to get into all that. She doesn't even get into, you know, all of that. She just talks about the shutdown and how it feels. The dorsal system is for digestion when it's relaxed, normal digestion, but then it's like a turtle when it senses danger, it's going to just like tuck in its shell and hide. And it actually, if you think of even how she uses this turtle and shark and it's, she tells about how like 500 million years ago, this is when the dorsal reaction or pattern developed. So these are primitive like instinctive responses that are just like in our genetics, in our, in the way animals and humans function for survival. So the dorsal is this turtle hiding in its shell when it gets scared. And that's the best way for it to survive. It's, it's a good thing. It does it right. It survives that way. The sympathetic that's when there's actually some energy involved. There's action. So that's why this is the shark instead of just curling up and, you know, hoping no one hurts you, there's some attack there. There's some movement, there's some energy and that's the fight or flight. There's movement there. And in order to get out of dorsal, we have to go through some movement. Now it doesn't mean we need to go attack people, but it could just be even just, you know, having some hope and having some thoughts or having some movement in the body that feels good to start to regulate into ventral. The ventral, I think she says is 200 million years ago. So it's the in um, addition, as our brain just grew and developed, it stacked these things on top of each other. And the ventral is like 
connection, like this puppy dog that's just like full of love and you feel safe and you feel like life's going to be okay and you see the beauty of life. And, and that state um, is you know, one that we can anchor in is really what she talks about. And, um, and then as we go into those other states, having this ventral vagal as our anchor allows us to explore in safety and we will get activated. That's part of, you know, being a human is to have <laughs> evolution and have growth and to have things that are fearful. But as long as we can anchor back in and go back to that ventral vagal, um, you know, that's where we can really, it's so, so much better for everything. Like I could get into a whole discussion on just the health aspect of being in the ventral vagal state, because that's the like rest and digest the rest and repair. It's where all of our systems, you know, it's like where our cells regenerate best and where our immune system works best and our reproductive system. So like all of that, she doesn't even really get into, but it's this, um, safe, state for connection and safety. Um, let's see, before I go on, are there any questions with that or any comments? Actually, I can't see the chat right now. You can probably see what I can see. Let's see, let me close that. Oh, there's the chat. Okay, I think we're good, okay. Sorry if you can see that, I'll put that down on the corner. Um, okay. So neuroception is just, neuro is like the nervous system's, ception is awareness. So the awareness of the, in the body by the nervous system. So there's in, inside awareness, outside awareness in between. Inside is within the body. So like, does my stomach feel hungry? Does my stomach feel like our nervous system's always trying to create this homeostasis, keep us safe, keep us comfortable. So like, what is my body feeling like on the inside? And that's, as you know, most, a lot of you are coaches, I think, um, we feel our bodies on the inside, right? This is, I, sorry, we feel our emotions <laughs> inside our bodies. We, some of us feel our bodies on the inside. A lot of us live from about here up. So that's what we're working on here is to feel more from our bodies so that we have this depth of information of what's going on at this biological level so that we can then like make our um, thought work and other stuff more effective. Um, so inside is within the body, outside is in the environment and then between is between people. So, um, Sorry, I don't know, you can probably see that. <laughs> how we think, feel, okay. Okay, how we think and feel and act begins with neuroception. That was a line, because I was listening to the audio book and I read it, but when I heard that, you know, especially from the coach training, like think, feel, act, I was like, huh, that, those words like, you know, <laughs> sounded familiar to me and I zoned in on that and I was like, okay, all of this begins with our neuroception. So again, if we, if our nervous system puts us into a fight or flight state, this is automatic. We're not thinking of doing it, but because of how it's had experiences in our childhood and growing up and what happened last week, we can go into, you know, fight or flight or whatever. And then we're actually like looking through the world or looking at the world differently through different a different lens. So we could do all of the thought work in the world, but we're still kind of coming from this lens of, um, you know, these thoughts are being generated from a place of dysregulation. Oh, and there was one question. Can you talk a little bit more about how we have to go to through the shark phase before going to the ventral vagal? I'm not sure what that would look like in practice. Yeah, that's such a good question because that could look anywhere from like raging on the page, journaling. Um, I wouldn't suggest any like real life stuff where you go and confront people when you're in that state, like get regulated first and then see what boundaries you want to set up. So, but a lot of us have learned to repress our anger at a very early age, especially people socialized as women, as you can imagine. Um, we have just started to repress our anger, but we can feel something in our body. And so just even giving yourself a chance to vent or journal. Um, but if you're in that shutdown stage, you might not even be to the point of journaling. You might not even, you know, it's like hopeless, it's helpless. I don't even, you know, so that would be, where you might start some slow movements. You could do it through the body. You could do slow movements. You can, you know, do specific breath work to 
activate the sympathetic system. Um, and then you can also just have statements like, like I'm alive. Like she actually, in fact, maybe I'll talk about these real quick. We'll just slip this in. She actually talks about these statements that you can use um, to, to be aware of what's going on and then to just like neutralize it. So in the, in self-compassion work, they say, let's see, I have it here. I was like, the easiest thing would be not to put it all on a document, but just go through the book. Okay. So in self-compassion, you would have this awareness. This is a moment of suffering. Suffering is part of life. May I be kind to myself? It's like three things to think. And then Deb Dana spe specifies it for nervous system. So you could like borrow some of these thoughts. Um, and even doing something like this could help get you out of that dorsal state. My nervous system's in a survival response. Moments of protection happen for everyone. May I bring some ventral vagal energy to this moment? So, um, okay. So I guess that didn't directly, <laughs> she's like ventral vagal. And, and what I had just said was like, we have to go through um, the sympathetic, but really I mean, I've even just heard statements like this is from Peter Levine, just saying something like, I'm alive, I'm alive, and I'm free to feel <laughs> different ways or something like that. I can't remember what he said, but just even like, I'm alive and I'm breathing, like that could be a little movement towards that movement, that action, that sympathetic, because it's kind of like from this place of desperation, you're like, you know what? I matter, you know, something like that. Does that make sense? May I, what is this? Okay, oh, the, oh yes. Michelle has like, that was then, this is now. And yes, that helps. And I actually have like a bunch of workshops that I've done um, coming out of freeze, healthy aggression, where you can like dive into those topics a little bit more. Cause I think it's fascinating that, Sometimes, especially what we see with chronic pain, which is, you know, my specialty is that people who have chronic pain oftentimes benefit from um, this like expressive writing, this expressive journaling, letting themselves say really horrible things that they would never say in real life. Um, and then that <laughs> helps with their chronic pain. Can't get into all of the details about that, but it's like um, healthy aggression has fascinated me because of that, because there is this element of like, we've got to get this like energy going. And sometimes that looks like anger, or sometimes it's just like, I got my back, you know, it doesn't have to be like mad at someone <laughs> all the time. Um, my, it's my biology wanting to send me a message. These are some other thoughts. My job is just to listen. I can tune in, tune toward, and listen without needing to make meaning. So if those feel a little more activating, I mean, I don't think we need to get like super, I think our body knows what to do naturally. So just like look for some of these more, if you feel in freeze, look for some of these thawing out type of things that feel like more, okay, I'm bringing some movement. I'm bringing some, um, some a little bit more peace. Um, and maybe that just looks like defending myself a little, and then I get to that more, you know, calm piece. Okay, such a good question. Okay, the last main thing that she wants, she, she like says, or the like three big principles um, of polyvagal theory is just co-regulation. We're wired for connection. So much of us, we're just really taught about like, regulate yourself, manage, you know, self-coach yourself. Like we're in our society really teaches us to be like independent and like not not need anything from anyone and that's a survival response but um when when we realize that co-regulation is actually a need for survival and that like for me I think it helped me have more compassion for myself of just like yeah it does make sense that I like like to be with other humans who are cool and like I feel validated and I connect and like it's not a weakness, I guess, is what it helped me understand for myself. I, it's not, you know, a, a character flaw that you sometimes just can't get yourself out of that survival state by yourself and you need to co-regulate with your dog or a person or you call someone on the phone. So that was an interesting point for me. And then, oh, okay, these were some of those things, right? The self-compassion is super important. This is a moment of suffering. Suffering's part of life. Yeah, I already read those. Okay, 
how are we with questions? This is all, that's all I had for slides. So we can just go back to, um, you know, any thoughts, questions, insights, uh, you could even maybe take some responses live if anyone wants to say something. You can just raise your hand. Let's see if I can see all. If I put it on gallery view, then it changes how it records. Okay, everyone's good. No comments, no questions, no insights. <laughs> okay, guys, I could I could talk forever, but I want to involve you if there's like, you know. Okay, but we'll I'll involve you with the uh, little exercises we're gonna do then, if if you're willing. <laughs> you can always just be the observer and just watch. But here's our opportunity. I'm going to change it back to the screen to um, practice and just like actually feel these things in our body. Okay, so the first one she talks about, which I really love, is just um, just feeling that vagus nerve. So there's one on the right and one on the left. But if you want to just with one hand um cup kind of the back of your neck right under where your skull meets your neck and that part you know where they intersect right there is where the vagus nerve starts and then with your other hand whichever side you want to just notice it comes down around the side by your ear down your neck this is where the vagus nerve innervates down into your chest your heart your lungs and then down into the lower organs right so like that whole way down that's the vagus nerve so if you just let your stomach or let your other hand land on your stomach there and you can just have this awareness of the place between your two hands and that's where the dorsal vagus is so remember that's the shutdown one it's the lowest on the um hierarchy so you can think of um, you know, this is like the lowest one in the body when we feel down to our stomach and our pelvis. And this area is when it's, when you're in regulation, the vagus nerve, the, the dorsal branch is important for digestion, especially, um, healthy digestion. So it's not just like, oh, I hate the vagus or the dorsal branch. It's like, why does it hurt me all the time? It's like, it does some good things for us. It regulates our digestion and then it has this protective turtle response for us, right? The turtle shell, which is, you know, something that it is doing to try to protect us, right? There's, there's no like malice or anything there. Uh, which chapter were these exercises in? This first one is in chapter two. Okay, so the dorsal state, you can, you know, if you want to put your hand down, you can if it's bothering you, but if you want to just keep feeling in between, I'm just going to read a tiny bit about the dorsal state. Um, it takes us, when we're in survival mode, the dorsal vagus takes us out of awareness, out of connection, and into collapse and in immobilization. We want to conserve our energy, everything slows down just to keep us alive. It's like if we could disappear or be comfortable, um, that that would help. If we um, don't feel what's happening or inhabit where we are, we'll survive. So it's like you can go through the motions, but feel kind of empty. Oh, show one more time where it goes down the neck. Oh, yeah. So it just goes down. Maybe I should just like read it to get it right. But it's... Um, Move your right hand down the side of your neck. So she says, you know, to hold it with your left hand, move your right hand down the side of your neck, down your throat, to your lungs, your heart, and finally to your abdomen. And then you imagine that energy between the two hands, and that's the dorsal branch. Uh, dorsal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, I've got some people joining again. Um, okay. And then if you. Does everyone get a sense of maybe I'm going to integrate some of these exercises together? So while we're talking about the dorsal, there's another exercise that she has later. I think it's chapter three where she talks about the landscape of dorsal or the landscape of any of them. So while we're here in dorsal, 
again, just, you can put your hand down if you want, but just noticing again, that's more in the lower stomach area, that isolation, that wanting to hide. How does that feel to you as far as like a color or how does that feel to you? Let me find the other one she used. Um, this is the landscape part of the exercise. Um, the qualities of it and maybe the movement of it. The sense of energy that's there, the words you'd use to describe it. What kind of words would you use to describe dorsal? Maybe you use um, some different words than dorsal. You use like collapsed or chaos or shut down or foggy. So just really feeling into like what it feels to be in dorsal. And then moving your hand up. So if you have, oh, someone said sluggish, overwhelmed. Oh, good. Yeah, I didn't see this. Yes, sluggish, overwhelmed. Yes. And sometimes, or I mean, I'm sure everyone could probably think of some time in your life that you felt that dorsal energy. Like maybe it's right now, maybe it was yesterday, but like maybe there was a time in your life that you were just like, I think of when I had four little kids <laughs> and I was just like literally just going through the motions and so disconnected because I was so overwhelmed. Yeah, overwhelmed, burnt out. Yeah. Okay. Now the ventral is above your diaphragm. The diaphragm is kind of at the bottom of the rib cage. And then can it vary? Sometimes my lower abdomen feels slow and sluggish and sometimes chaotic. Oh, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly how to answer that because I do have a lot of um, issues with IBS and stuff, that's what brought me to all the mind body work. And so when I do have stress, it is a lot of time in my stomach. And I do feel like that's the more the sympathetic in the stomach. So I'm, my guess is it's not just like cut and dry. Like, you know, the stomach is only by the, um, the dorsal vagal, because we also know like the sympathetic, the activation one goes down to like our adrenals and the, and cortisol is produced there. So I think it's all interactive, but knowing like that chaotic energy that might feel different than the slow and sluggish energy. So even if it is in the stomach, I would still consider that like sympathetic. What do you guys think? I was confused about this part. The book indicated that dorsal is not always a problem or negative, but a natural state, but my brain always sees it as a problem. Yeah. We've totally like pathologized, you know, anything that's like, you know, not just like perfect. And so, um, I think it helps with the compassion, right? To see it as like, this is a normal state. This is a protective state. My body's working with me. It's not trying to sabotage me. Thank you body for like showing me that you're really scared right now, right? Does that, are you still confused or was it just kind of like new information that you hadn't realized, Sarah? Um, it's more like, the way she said it is like we move in and out of it during the day and it like I felt like I don't understand that part of it where it would just maybe happen at that where it wasn't like like I'm almost having a trauma response right um, oh. that, right mm -hmm. so I'm like what is that part then where it would just be like not a trauma response I guess ah oh okay yeah and some of these exercises might be really good to just be like we can be anchored in ventral and then dip our toe into dorsal. And so you may even notice sometimes that you're like, I had like a, a little mini freeze response, but I didn't go full into the, you know, and you can kind of see it's on a spectrum. And then that gets a little less scary because if you just start to feel it, then a lot of times you can, you know, know what's going on before you get into the full tra trauma response. But I think, yeah, a lot of times we feel just a little bit of that freeze or, you know, fight or whatever. And we're like, oh, this is just like it was before, right? We go into that system fully because that's what our nervous system is designed to do to protect us. And if, yeah, if we can just be like, okay, here's this protective thing my brain's trying to do. Like for me, freeze is classic when I'm like, since a lot of you are coaches, you know, like putting a new offer out there, sending an email. And, and part of me is like, okay, freeze is this protective response. Like part of me is like scared. And, you know, if I can just acknowledge that and, and not 
be traumatized, you know, go into the full story of like, this is traumatizing, but you know, that's one example of how, when we can do it in small steps, then basically she hasn't talked about it here, but we increase our window of tolerance every time we regulate and, you know, go back to the ventral. So we won't get, it won't take as much energy to get back and we won't get triggered as often. But right now when we're starting, and especially when we're just like starting to learn about all of this and like seeing it everywhere, it can, it, it can kind of feel more chaotic and overwhelming at first <laughs> of like, oh my gosh, everything's like taking me into these states. And I feel like, how is my body working with me? But befriending yeah. the nervous system. I love when, you know, she just, how she calls it that befriending the nervous system. Betsy, okay. Can I share something? Yes. Um, yes, Michelle, I was just, thank you to... for having this. Uh, I did read the first two chapters and relating to the, uh, the different states, something that I did recently that was so helpful was to, uh, create like buckets of reason thing, things that cause me to feel triggered. And what I've been noticing, and I, I sort of this past weekend, actually yesterday, there were a couple of things that happened that I felt really activated. And afterwards, I, I was able to reflect and think, okay, that's goes, I was able to map it back to like a childhood experience. Yeah. And it happened several times. And like, there were two that were within like 10 minutes of each other huh? with my family over just at dinner, like preparing dinner and things happened. And I was really activated two times, like, Bad, like really, really bad. I was like, like that. Mm -hmm. And I realized after, okay, that's going back to this, that's going back to that. So it helped me to sort of categorize, like have these big buckets of triggers. And now I know like things are falling a little neatly into these areas. So now I can see, oh, okay, I get it. That's because of this. And yes. so where I used to think I had like all of these things, they're kind of like boiling down to three or four, or whatever it is, areas. Uh, That's been very, very helpful for me. Uh, and so I wanted to just offer that because I literally wrote it down and it's like, okay, so what often causes me to go into sympathetic? And I listed the things. And I, so when those things happen, I'm like, oh, no wonder. Yeah. This way because this is this way and that reminds you of that and okay so we need to heal that so we need to you know work through that yeah but for me having the awareness of like those those main trigger points yeah has been very very helpful which does not mean that I'm I'm that I'm not getting activated because I still am yeah but I have awareness around it that I didn't have six months ago yeah so that's been that's been really helpful and I I I made my I didn't apologize I offered um I didn't have apologies for the way I I I had apologies for the way I responded but not for the fact that I had the actual feeling and the experience and I was yeah. with my family so I was able to explain the reasons why and they know the work that I'm doing uh, but it was just interesting that things are just starting to like, okay, that's because of this. And so having that connection was, for me, has been extremely helpful. Also painful in some ways, but I'm doing my best to stay curious about it. Love it. Uh, instead of judging, oh, there you go again, you know, yes. like, got activated again. And it's like, it's starting to make more sense now. And it it's just, it keeps unfolding like more and more of it. And then I realized, wow, there's a lot. <laughs> there's yeah. a lot here. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but there has also been a lot of progress. And so yeah. there's some more, there's a lot more patience there and more curiosity, I think, than anything else. Yeah. I love that. And each time we get triggered is just that chance for curiosity. And like you said, it can go back to a childhood thing. If if you don't immediately know what it is, like that's okay too. But the more you spend time in this awareness, the more these patterns will become more clear. And um, it's just, I think of like in yoga, they talk about some scaras, which are like rocks in a river that are slowing the flow. And so each time we like 
process through our nervous system stuff, we are like removing one of those rocks of like this old thing that was this, you know, thought pattern that created all this stuckness and these behavior patterns that are just subconscious. And when we have that awareness, um, I think she even says something like when we bring perception to neuroception, then it like neutralizes it or something. Basically when we add um, perception to neuroception, we bring a consciousness to it into our awareness and then we can and then we can make those changes right then we can start to come from a more conscious place i love it love it love it michelle and then i like could i'm actually giving a whole um workshop later this week on getting good at feeling good and where like buffering isn't bad sometimes we need it yeah i have a podcast episode called pleasure on purpose i am a big i love teaching about that we, you know, we, we do sometimes need some just like creature comforts and it's not bad, especially if we're doing it with intent. Um, and then, oh, Connie, I never thought about thinking about the dorsal as being aware instead of judging it. I know we have so much judgment towards these things. It helps to stop equating nervous system responses only with trauma. Oh my gosh, Deb. I love, love, love that. I, I like to call them, I was calling them survival states for a while. And then I've even just heard them called protective states, which feels even a little more neutral to me. So I do think you're right, Deb, when we go into trauma response, like, I mean, technically trauma is anything that is like more than what our nervous system can handle. So you can argue it is that, but it also, that has a loaded, you know, a lot of words about it <laughs> or thoughts, you know, about it thought patterns. Um, okay. Desi, I've been self-coaching and getting coached on my upcoming launch. I think I'm often going into dorsal response. Yeah. Do you just try to regulate and then bring yourself back to coaching cycle back and forth? I'm seeing neuroception is where I'm getting stuck, trying to change my thoughts in certain areas. Yeah. I always think of it as like, you can do top down or bottom up approaches, or sometimes there's a mix, but yeah, getting regulated is going to really help you to take those actions versus just being like, let me just push through. Cause usually what we end up doing is just feeling really bad about ourselves, which is a free state of, you know, shame and stuff. So yeah, I would definitely like look more into getting regulated, how those ways work for you. Um, and and then, yeah, bringing yourself back to the coaching and cycle back and forth. Yeah. And sometimes, like we were saying before, sometimes it's good to just distract and just like not force yourself to heal and feel all the time and like go on a walk and like pet your dog and watch a movie guilt-free. Um, sounds like a lot of it is about dropping the resistance and leaning into these exercises. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we're befriending our nervous system and seeing these as opportunities to invite more self-compassion. Yes, please share my podcast name. It's Unstoppable Body and Mind. Um, yes. Oh, thanks, Wendy. Unstoppable Body and Mind. <laughs> you got it. Okay, so good. Um, I love that idea of bringing consciousness to what is unconscious so it can be healed. That's exactly the point. If I just see the process as Eckhart Tolle says, things hit our stuff. So we're just like going around in the environment, something hits our stuff, our nervous system, he doesn't say this, but our nervous system, you know, gets triggered, goes into a state. And when we can identify that state and like Michelle was saying, like work backwards and, you know, bring consciousness to it and, and bring love to it and accept it instead of resisting it. Right. So like, Oh, I'm so dumb that I did this. Right. You're like, Oh my gosh, of course I'm afraid. Of course I came from this kind of childhood. Of course that it's important to me and that feels safe. And then we can have a totally different response, get more into the ventral state and, you know, explore from that sense of safety and that sense of help and connection and, and, you know, really where we can create more change in the world rather than being like, let me just give and give and give at my own expense and get burned out. And cause everyone needs me. It's like, let me regulate, get ventral. And then I can, you know, give to other people. So we, okay. I think we're caught up with chat and everything we did our we did our dorsal and then we can move like if you go back to that exercise we were just doing to the ventral let's do the the ventral next so we're both in the front of the body even though we know it innervates like all the way around this is like a simplistic view but you could imagine this is where the ventral is which is 
you know, that state of calm connection. It's that state of um, knowing that like you're feeling safe, like we're going to be okay. This is that area. You can feel this area of your heart rate and your breathing. This is where how she describes it. I'm just going to read. I love this. We take pleasure in seeing the faces of friends. We're able to tune into conversations and tune out distractions. In a ventral vagal state, we can acknowledge distress, explore options, and reach out for and offer support. We're resourced and resourceful. Our attention is focused on connection to others, or sorry, connection to ourselves, to others, to the world, and to spirit. This is a place of well-being. So as you hear this description, I want you to now think of times of your life that you felt it, how it feels. Maybe you imagine a place where you feel that peace. Maybe, you know, I always imagine the beach. Maybe someday I'll imagine something different. But for me, it's just always like a beachy, um, hearing the waves. You can Think of the color of that ventral, you know, what is the landscape? What are the words you would use to describe it? I always like things like um, expansive and like even just like regulated, it feels like. So just really feeling into that ventral vagal, how it feels for you. What you could even imagine as something that you could take from there to hold on to. So like Sarah says, time with animals of any kind, a place in nature, whether it's a beach or a forest, it's grounding, it's connected. So yeah, if you think, um, I had never done this before, but I love how she said, like, take a piece of that landscape that you can, um, you know, anchor back to basically. So she suggested, I think like a stone from the beach that she could hold on to in her hand, or maybe it is a little animal or it's a, um, you know, it's a, a blanket that you've had or, okay, sun, sunrise and sunsets are times that feel most anchored and well, yes, yes, those can be glimmers we'll talk about later um, and predictive glimmers because we're knowing like, oh, that always is this ventral state for me. Grounded expansiveness. Oh, I love that. Grounded expansiveness. Feel it in nature. Other times I've been connected through yoga, breath work, other body centered practices. Yeah. So, yeah. Did anyone think of a little object to represent that ventral for them that they can take with them? Maybe it's a picture of something, or maybe it's a, um, an actual object from that area. Kind of fun to think about though, right? Because then we have this like, we have all of these resources to help get us back to ventral, including like that stone that we're holding in our hand or what in our imagination in our hand. <laughs> okay. All right. So think about that. I don't see any other chats on it. So we'll move. Oh, Sarah says, I love collecting rocks from beaches. I visit um, yes, or small places, oh, sorry, pieces of driftwood, little jars of sand. Yes, exactly. Um, seeing myself swinging in a swing. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I've been like imagining dancing lately. I used to, um, before, like I, I've been getting into dancing and they do this birthday dance thing. And so it would just get me so like calm and excited at the same time and happy thinking of that birthday dance and what song I wanted to do and how fun it was going to be. Yeah. So here's the thing. There's hundreds of different ways to regulate nervous systems. So we're finding for yourself, you're finding like what your particular nervous system loves, thrives on, what's nourishing to you. Yeah. The, okay, we'll, we'll move on from ventral unless there's any, there are any more comments about ventral, but you guys get it, right? Like that's the like, oh, that yummy place. We feel gratitude. We're like, okay, things are going to be okay. I think of things like, um, things are always working out for me. Um, let's see. Oh, Renee says, I would love to learn about the vagal break. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this sympathetic exercise. And then the vagal break, I think we'll have time for both the sympathetic. If you have your hand, 
here again at the back of your head. This time the other hand is in the back, just above your waist. So this is that activation. I think of that shark, right? Like that back side of the um, back that helps me remember the sympathetic is that movement, that activation. Again, if you don't want to keep holding it, you can, or if you like to just like imagine the energy that's running between those two spots, um, feel that sympathetic area. Again, this is a helpful state for us, right? It's helpful to not just have to freeze. Now we can mobilize. It's bringing us safety. It's helping us um, survive. And the sympathetic is, sorry, I had some little things highlighted here. Um, oh, did I? <laughs> here it is. The sympathetic Think about your daily life. Do you have a list of endless demands? Do you have responsibilities that keep adding up no matter what you do? Notice your body's response to this sympathetically fueled state. It's actually producing cortisol when we get into this. Um, moving out of ventral safety into the energy of the sympathetic system, we have a sense of impending danger and enter into fight and flight. The world feels like an unsafe place with unsafe people. We could misread cues and experience a neutral faces and tones of voice as signs of danger. So even if it's not dangerous, we're experiencing it like it's dangerous. We're on high guard. Our hearing is tuned to listen for sounds of danger. It's easy to miss the sounds of friendly voices around us. When we scan the environment, we're no longer aware and alert, we're alarmed and hyper vigilant. We are in our own separated place from others, and we look at the world from a us versus them or me versus you mindset. Oh, Wendy says, I've lived here most of my life, right? If, if it feels safest for your nervous system as it developed to go into sympathetic, yeah, there's that like that energy to it. And I can do a lot of things. And if I just do more, I can feel better about myself. Um, let's see what Sarah says, and it can go overboard and the good, like the good and bad sides of coffee. Exactly. Um, Betsy. Oh, Hey, Betsy. <laughs> just thinking about the space between the back of my neck and my lower back. Think of the fur on my dad's or on my dog's back stands up when she gets riled up and ready to go into the offensive. Totally. That's a good um, visualization. It's comfortable not or not comfortable for me. Oh, the, oh, comfortable, not comfortable. I know what you mean. Like you're used to it. So you're comfortable being in it, <laughs> even though it's discomfort, it's uncomfortable, uncomfortable. And then show the ventral state again. Yeah. Page. So it would be from the back of the neck to the chest. So, you know, a lot of times when I feel that ventral state, that is where I feel expansive or light or like warm, fuzzy. So that's the ventral. Okay. Okay. Does it come around the side of the neck and then over to the front? Yeah, that's basically what she was saying is like, it's the side of the neck and then down into the like chest and then down into the abdomen. Yeah. Okay, let's do that exercise with the vagal break. So just like briefly what the vagal break is, I got con so confused with this at first because <laughs> you're like, the activation is like a bike going down a hill and the vagal break is like putting on the brakes. So when our sympathetic activation gets going, we're in fear, fight or flight, um, the vagal break helps bring us back to the ventral. It's um, since our breathing is highly uh, correlated with the vagal break, even that you can, there's some breaking and releasing as we breathe. So as we, let's do the exercise together, we'll incorporate the breath with it. So if you can go ahead and stand up, um, go ahead and just stand and you'll imagine one foot in ventral, so the like safe, calm, like happy, regulated, the, the dog ready to connect place. And then one foot is in sympathetic. So one foot is in that shark attack, the mobilization, the defensiveness. So just play around with shifting from side to side. And as you inhale, 
That's the sympathetic. That's the shark one. Your, your vagal break is off. And then as you exhale, that's the vagal break turning on. And that's the calm state. So kind of just like toggle back and forth, let yourself kind of get into some of those descriptions if you can. If you remember those feelings of ventral, of safety and co-regulation and happiness, and then that you know anxiousness and I'm not doing enough. And then see if you can just go fully into the vagal break. And so go fully into ventral. So just shift the weight to that side of your foot. That's the ventral side. And then just kind of keep your toe tapped on the right. So we're just going to imagine like dipping your toe into sympathetic a little, but staying mainly anchored and just see if you can re recreate some of that sensation in, in your body and how it's feeling to imagine mainly being anchored with that vagal break and then just like shifting into a little bit of activation. And then you can take yourself all the way into some activation and maybe imagine those stressful things you've been thinking about or things from your past and how it would feel to just bring a little bit of that ventral back in. So that's one thing we can do is um, my nervous system is in a survival response. These moments of protection happen for everyone. And may I bring some ventral vagal energy to this moment. So as you're doing that, you might think of the object that you're like grabbing and bringing, like holding or something as you shift over to that vagal side. How does that go for you guys? That's, that's the exercise. You can sit, sit back down. I'm curious if anyone has feedback about that. Um, I know the vagal break just seemed so weird to me, but because <laughs> you're like activating the vagus nerve calms the nervous system. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Paige, so question, how do we go from dorsal to sympathetic? So front to back to vagal, if we need to move from dorsal through sympathetic to get to vagal, maybe I got that wrong. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, that's a good question because thinking of it in this like two-dimensional plane of like, it just runs down the front of our body and it runs down the back of our body isn't totally accurate because it's like 3D and wrapping all around. Um, so, so it's like coming from that back area, the sympathetic, but it's also spreading around. So maybe you could just think of kind of like the energy of it, if that doesn't sound too weird. You know, I like talking about energy, but for me, that just means the emotionality of it, the emotions, the sensation of my body when I feel shut down versus when I feel a little bit more um, activated towards um, like some movement. I think of like a bear coming out of hibernation and you're just starting to like, you know, feel some movement and some some desires to like do some things. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think, you know, we, we, we don't need to get super fixated on like, okay, first step is get to activation and then to ventral. Um, that is the hierarchy, but also some of the um, exercises that we may do naturally will move us through that. So looking for more of the activating type of exercises can be helpful, but also sometimes um, in dorsal you know, it, it isn't as clear of a distinction of like, I'm moving from the front of my body to the back of my body to the front of my body again, right? They're kind of all intertwined. And Sarah says, rocking back and forth. Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. I think I missed something. <laughs> it was good to be aware of it. I did that this morning when stressful events happen, but it brings so much more awareness to what I was able to do. And yeah, Sarah rocking back and forth. Was that a suggestion for Paige? Like, as far as like, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, I just, yeah. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Cause these are just representations. This is not exactly what's going on with the vagus nerve. It's not just right here, but, but when we add the movement to it, it's like our brain remembers the story that we've developed of like, this is the, this is how I get back into, um, you know, this is where I go through this sense of activation. I'm alive. I I'm ready to enter I'm ready to accept some of that vagal energy. That enough 
is moving through sympathetic, right? Like I'm willing to allow some ventral that might be just enough of going through that sympathetic to get to where we need to be. Does that make sense? We don't have to do a whole like, today's the day I'm just like angry and da, 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 you know. <laughs> okay. Um, it really helped me to feel the extremes of dorsal versus sympathetic and me having the awareness of coming to the middle with ventral. It reminded me of a balance scale. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I love, again, that thing of anchoring, because we're like, okay, I'm really anchored here. And if my string is long enough, or whatever my rope, I can like really explore all these different places in safety, still be activated, and, and still anchored at the same time, which is a concept I didn't really get. Um, that you can like be anchored in ventral and still like, touch on the others. I mean, I, I knew about mixed states, but this is just this purposeful way of, you know, getting ourselves from this state of safety moving forward. And how good would that be when we're like, yeah, doing launches or, you know, we're like, I'm in this state of safety. And then I just like do these little things to challenge myself. And then um, I realize that I'm still safe. And then that gets rid of all of those old, you know, thought patterns and trauma responses, if you call them that survival responses, whatever, because you're each time that happens, you're kind of like picking that thread and unwinding it and unweaving it and maybe letting it go even. Okay. We have like three minutes left. I don't think we'll get to the other exercises, but fortunately we were able to integrate the landscapes into it. And there was a really interesting exercise about saying no or saying yes or being unsure from the different states. So that's a pretty interesting thing. I guess we just have a few minutes we could go through it. So if you were to imagine saying no to something, you could say no from a really regulated place, right? You could say no from ventral and that could just be like, you know, sometimes your toddler wants something and you're like, no, we are not going to, you know, do that. And you're just totally fine about it. You could say no from that dorsal place. Like that has a different feeling where you're like hiding and you're like, no, right? And then you could say no from that sympathetic place. It's like, no, you know, like you're mad and right. So, so just even that, that action or that those words are different depending on our state. What about something you're unsure about? How does that feel when you're, when you're in ventral you might be unsure about something and you're just like, ooh, interesting. I get to find out. I'm curious. Oh, I'm unsure. What an opportunity. Cool. You know, versus unsure when you're in dorsal, when you're in freeze, you're overwhelmed, you're helpless, you're hopeless. Unsure can feel like really unsafe. And then if you're in more of that sympathetic, how would that be different if you were unsure that you have a little more of that action energy? might be just flitting around from thing to thing. And, you know, you're just like, I don't know what to do. Yes, exactly. I'm like, I can relate. That's actually a lot of times how we're trained, right? We're like, okay, there's this, I'm in freeze. So what I need to do is just like commit and act and do it every day and do it twice a day and da, 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 you know, we're like, let me just act my way out of it. Okay. And then if you said yes, that's the other thing. I think every, you said yes from um, from that safe place. How does that feel? Mm, feels yummy. I love saying yes to people when I want to do something for them. It feels so good. And then how would you say yes from that dorsal place? You're like shut down. You're feeling like you're, you're trapped. You have no say in it. And you're just like, yes. And you're just like this victim versus yes from that sympathetic place. How would that be? So interesting, right? Because sometimes we're just like, oh, it's, I just, just go say this. Well, it doesn't matter as much what you're saying as the state that you're coming from. And then the last exercise we didn't get to was just anchoring in curiosity, just like, I'm ready to see what's possible. Um, but basically, you know, for this week, if you want to really start to feel into that ventral state more, I mean, that's what this whole book is about. We'll talk about it in lots of different ways. Um, noticing that um, she calls them glimmers. I don't think she's talked about it yet in the book, but just those times, even if it's just a brief moment where you're like looking out the window and the sun's shining just right and you're like, oh, okay, 
life is good. I'm going to be okay. I'm grateful. Notice those glimmers and then just be aware of those other nervous system states, you know, play with the idea of, of what is it? Is it labeling it? Don't get too perfectionistic about it. It's not like a, you know, you're going to get it wrong and then you'll mess anything up. You're just like, this is your playground right now. All right. So I love it. I think um, I'm not sure what the schedule is, but we're over on time and I have to go, but I have the schedule posted and we'll have, I think three more chapters or two more chapters for next week. So same time next week. Thank you so much for joining you guys. That was great. I love seeing your smiling faces and reading your comments and having that interaction. And thanks so much, you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.